your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. Modern consumers' use of smartphone technology is just one example of the way apps are changing our lives. And for a look at the potential technology trends of 2016, we're joined by tech journalist Angus Kidman. Thanks for joining us, Angus. No problem. Now, what are we looking to this year? I understand mobile banking is a big one. Um, and two aspects to this, of course, too, in Western markets like ours and also in developing. So we'll start with the Western markets. What, what are we going to expect here in Australia? Well, I, we've already seen a big shift towards people using their phones just to sort of check their online balances and move things around. The big trend for this year is going to be the shift towards using your phone to actually make the payment. So in the same way that we've all got used to using tap and pay with our credit cards, you'll actually be able to use your phone to do that. We've had Apple do a limited rollout of that with their phones. We're going to see Android Pay, the Android equivalent, come out this year as well. So it's going to become a really common sight to see people you know, in supermarkets and other shops actually swiping their phone in order to make a payment and you know, potentially getting rid of their cards altogether. So what sort of security would be in place from, to stop me swiping Gemma's phone mm. and uh, using it to buy something? <laughs> well, yeah, I think you need to have the correct security set up on your phone in the first place. It's mm. never a good idea to have your phone set up so that anyone can pick it up and start using it because there's already plenty of dangerous things they can do. This is just going to be one more on that list. So making sure you've got a password and a good password or that you're using biometric security, such as a fingerprint, is mm. going to be really essential when this stuff takes off. Yeah, well, I mean, it's going to be very convenient. Um, but in developing countries, we'll just touch on here, mobile banking, it's, it's not just about convenience, is it? It's, it's really bringing them... Um, uh, into the centering. Yeah, it's, 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 it's something that was um, highlighted by Bill Gates. He does an annual letter looking at sort of big trends and what he sees happening. And something he pointed out is that in lots of third world countries, access to any kind of banking just hasn't been possible before. There's no branch network. There's no real finance system. And now that you know, mobile phones have become so prevalent, it's really giving people access to a banking system, the ability to take out loans, the ability to you know, safely store their money for the first time. So in some ways, that's even more exciting than just the ability to be able to go and tap at a supermarket. Yeah. It's all well and good to be using our um, smartphones and other devices to do all these wonderful things, but they, you run out of battery. What, <laughs> what's happening with battery power in 2016? Uh, well, we, I think we'll see a continued improvement. Battery life has got better with smartphones, but there's still that ongoing challenge. You get towards the end of the day and you're thinking, damn, there's no battery life left in this. I'm not going to make it home. So the trend towards phones getting bigger has helped with that, but we're also seeing improvements in the way that we amount of power we can store and also how quickly we can recharge phones. So I think we're going to see the case where if you're able to plug in for 10 minutes, your phone will actually you know, be pretty effective for several more hours. We've already seen versions of that in some phones in 2015 and this year I think that technology is going to become really mainstream. And battery development is really exciting when we're talking um, solar energy as well isn't it on a, on a different application there to phones? Well, absolutely. I mean, th th we, we want to see a move towards solar energy. Obviously, it's very important in terms of yeah, dealing with climate change. And we're starting to see the emergence of affordable home batteries that can store large amounts of solar power so that you can get hold of the power when the sun's out, but then actually have access to the energy during the night, which typically is when you want to be able to use it. Because I think there was Tesla has released one that's going to be on sale in Australia. I think it costs around $12,000. Yes, that's the, initially they're not going to be super cheap, although $12,000 for a solar battery is still better than what we've sort of had to pay in the past. But the expectation is, as with most other technologies, give it a couple of years um, when these things go into mass production and the pricing should go right down. So I think it's going to be very interesting times for solar batteries over the next couple of years. Um, now, Angus, faster broadband, where are we at with that? Well, hopefully this year we're finally going to see some movement. I think everyone's suffering from MBN fatigue. We feel yeah. like we've been promised things forever and nothing's shown up. But we are going to see a lot of key developments in 2016. We're going to see MBN satellites will go live. So for really remote users, that's going to offer much better speed than they've had in the past. We're going to see the use of the existing pay TV cable networks will be sold through MBN. So that will give lots more people access to that. And we'll see the rollout of what's called the mixed technology mode, where you have a combination of high-speed fibre and copper, which is, should give people better speeds and possibly a bit quicker than if we'd waited for a full fibre rollout. Because everyone's now looking to streaming their television. You know, you've got the rise of the things like uh, Netflix, Presto, all mm. the other ones, mm, yeah. Stan or whatever they are, ABC iView and things like that. Because you, you need that faster broadband to be able to access these programs when you want them rather than seeing that buffering yeah, yeah. happening, which often happens. <laughs> 
Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the key drivers. We've already seen that, yeah, in lots of markets, services, streaming services will account for 70 percent or more of all the bandwidth. So that's really going to drive an interest in getting higher speeds, I think. Um, and now we can't let you go without bringing up this story from the Sun Herald today where, you know, humans are winning out against technology here because driverless cars are in twice as many crashes, a study has shown. Yes, it was a study done by the University of Michigan and they, what they found is because these cars are programmed to very strictly follow the relevant road rules, they often end up interacting with human drivers who don't strictly follow the relevant <laughs> road rules. <laughs> and as a result, they get rear-ended all the time. This is the big problem. We haven't seen any big fatalities from a driverless car yet, but we're mm -hmm. definitely having to work out, well, how often do we have to tell them to break the rules? Because the reality is that most drivers do break the rules quite often. They'll go a little bit faster than they're supposed to, or they'll make a last minute decision based on what's going around. And um, we're going to have to work out how to teach driverless cars to actually break the law a little bit, it seems. <laughs> There's been so many tests of driverless cars and people looking into different ways of making them work. Are they ever really going to take off? Oh yes, I think they will because in the end they ca their reaction times are already much, much better than human drivers. It's just a matter of building out the intelligence and applying a little bit of what's known as fuzzy logic to really get them in place. So it's good that we're doing lots of testing on them, but I would expect that within a couple of years they're going to be quite commonplace. Angus Kidman, our resident techie, thanks so much for joining us. No problem.